Hey you guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Today I am sharing with you the books that I read in the month of May and June. So in the past two months I've been quite the busy bee. I've been going to school full time this summer because I am taking a summer semester. It is also my last semester at university. So I have been struggling when it comes to reading books. I haven't been able to read as much as I wanted to, but I'm still quite satisfied with the amount of books that I've read considering the fact that I've been going to university full time. This is why I've decided to combine the months of May and June, just because I felt like I hadn't read enough books in the month of May, so I decided to combine it with June. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. In the month of May, I read a grand total of four books. So the first book that I read in the month of May is Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. This is a story of Penny, who is finally going to college. She's so excited to finally leave everything she knows behind. And then Penny meets Sam, a boy who works at a coffee house who also happens to be living at said coffee house. Uh, Sam is broke and just not at his best place financially and just in life in general. Uh, and when they meet, they decide to exchange number and they stay in touch via text messages. I gave Emergency Contact 5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. It is a very cute contemporary and it's perfect for summertime. I really like the characters of Sam and Penny. I felt like I could relate to both of them on some level and I really like their relationship they're super cute and it's also super relatable I mean it's really real and raw there isn't much fluff to their relationship it's really something that could happen in real life you know what I mean the next book that I read during the month of May is Eliza and her Monsters by Francesca Zappia this is the story of Eliza who is a creator of a super popular webcomic called Monstrous Sea but the thing is that no one knows that Eliza is the creator so when this cute boy transfers to her school, he thinks that Eliza is just another fan of the series. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. I've heard so many great things about Eliza and her monsters here on booktube and on bookstagram and just goodreads. And I have to admit that when I first started it, I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy it. But it turns out that Eliza is so relatable and I just really like the story and this book really sneaks up on you. I ended up like crying while reading this book. I just could relate to Eliza so much. I feel like this really dwells into what it's like being part of an online community and I could so relate to that and I'm so thankful for this book. It's such a great book. I highly recommend it. It was a really great surprise and it's probably one of my favorite books of 2018. The third book that I read during the month of May is Beauty and the Beast Lost in a Book by Jennifer Donnelly. This story picks up right after Belle has escaped the castle and has been rescued by the Beast. And as a reward, the Beast shows Belle his library. Belle finds this book in the library that takes her to another world called Nevermore. Uh, she meets new people, makes new friends, and eventually she has to decide whether she wants to stay in this new world or come back to her friends at the castle. I gave Lost in a Book four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I love the world it was set in. I am a huge fan of Beauty and the Beast, so of course I was kind of bound to love it. Um, but my expectations were really high and they were all met. I feel like this book really follows the world created in the movie, like the ambiance, the character, everything is the same. Nothing has changed. It's literally, you're just transported to the movie and you're reading about it. <laughs> it's kind of... It's kind of like the movie was transported into this book. I also really loved the way this was written. I really loved the way everything was described. I felt like the description were lush and vivid. I could imagine myself being in this new world and of course in the Beast's castle. I just really enjoyed this book and it is a middle grade novel. I'm normally not a big fan of middle grade but this one just has my heart and if you're a fan of Beauty and the Beast I would highly recommend picking this up. The last book I read during the month of May is Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. This is a sequel to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda and it follows Leah, Simon's best friend. Leah is bisexual and she hasn't told anyone but her mom and Leah doesn't know how to tell her friends. Um, soon her group start fracturing in different ways with graduation and prom coming up soon. Um, there's tension in the air and Leah doesn't really know where to stand especially since she's developing a crush on one of her friends. I gave this book four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. I loved Simon's vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda so I was so excited when Becky Albertalli announced that she was coming up with a sequel to this. 
I just love this world, okay? And I was so glad to come back to it. Honestly, it felt like coming home. I love these characters so much and it felt so good to just be back into this world and read about what they were up to. I really loved Leah as a narrator. I could totally relate to her and I love the snarky humor. I am so sad that the Simon's verse is now over because I just love this character so much. <laughs> also, can we talk about this cover? Like, I love the pop of color, honestly. And I love the fact that it was set during senior year. Um, we've all been there and I could totally relate to that. So that's it for the books that I've read during the month of May. Now let's move on to June. In June I read a grand total of five books, which is quite impressive considering the fact that it was midterms and that I'm now heading into finals. I honestly don't know how I managed it, but oh well, I'm not complaining. <laughs> the first book that I read in June is Fireworks by Katie Coutinho. Fireworks follows the story of two best friends, Olivia and Dana, who head off to Orlando to audition for this new singing group. Initially, Olivia is the only one who is supposed to audition, but soon Dana ends up being discovered too. Soon they are both training to become pop stars, but of course this creates a shift in their friendship. I gave Fireworks 3 out of 5 stars. Um, I have to admit that it's not my favorite Katie Coutinho book, but I did enjoy the world it was set in. I felt like it was really the 1990s in Orlando. I really liked the setting. The writing was really vivid and I could really imagine myself being there. However, I feel like the story was kind of boring. Boring is maybe not the word that I should be using here, but I just mean that I wasn't as involved with this story as I was with other Katie Coutinho books. I didn't particularly connect with any of the characters and since this is a mostly dr character driven book that made me enjoy it a lot less than I thought I would. I also wasn't a big fan of how things unfolded at the end though I still like the way the author wrapped up things at the end. Overall that just wasn't my favorite book of Katie Coutinho's and I don't think this is her strongest novel. The second book that I've read this month is The Dark Prophecy by Rick Riordan. This is the second book in the Trials of Apollo series and it follows the story of the god Apollo who falls down to earth and has to go through certain trials to regain his powers as a god. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. Trials of Apollo series is not my favorite, but I still enjoy it. It has a typical Riordan humor and if you've read any of Rick Riordan's book, you know what I'm talking about. These books are just super enjoyable, really unrealistic, but like super fun to read and I don't know, I'm just really enjoying my time whenever I read them. And this one was no different. The third book that I read during the month of June is Nine Days and Nine Nights by Katie Coutinho. This is a sequel to 99 Days, which I've talked about on my channel before. I think it was in my last reading wrap up and I'll leave the link on the screen if you want to learn more about the first book. This follows the story of Molly who goes on a European vacation with her new boyfriend that she's met at college. And of course, during her vacation, she sees one of the Donnelly boys. I don't want to go too much into details because I don't want to spoil you guys the first book, but this one was such a nice surprise. I don't know if you remember correctly. Uh, when I read the first one, I really didn't like Molly. And in this one, I really liked her. Um, I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that I didn't hate Molly as much anymore. In the first book, I felt like she was playing the victim. While this is kind of still the case here, I feel like she's grown a lot as a character. And college has done her good. Honestly, good job, Molly. There's also the fact that this is set in Europe. And if you know me at all, you know that I love traveling and that Europe has stolen my heart. I went to London. I studied abroad in England for three months um, this fall and I absolutely loved it. I really want to go back. And this starts off in London and it goes to like other countries. And I was just so happy with the setting. And like, I don't know, it made me want to travel more. And knowing Katie Coutinho, the description were vivid and they made me want to go and I'm like, why do you do this to me when I'm stuck at school? <laughs> but honestly, really enjoyed it. Um, I was really surprised because I thought that I wouldn't like it as much because of Molly, but honestly, loved it. I was, it was really unexpected. The fourth book that I read this month is Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. This is a story of a girl named Rachel who agrees to go on the Singapore vacation to visit her boyfriend's family and it turns out that his family is crazy rich. <laughs> they are going to the wedding of Nick's best friend and Rachel was expecting to have a nice relaxing vacation but turns out 
This is one hell of a ride. Uh, as Nick is one of Asia's most eligible bachelors, people want to keep Nick and Rachel apart. So I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars. And don't kill me guys, I know. Um, I was expecting to love this so much. There's a movie coming out and the trailer looks so good. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna love this. There's like drama, it's like set in an Asian country. And I was just like, oh my god, I'm so gonna love this. And I was disappointed. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the story, I didn't hate it, I still gave it 3 stars, but I don't know, there was something for me that was missing. I felt like there were so many characters, for, honestly it was hard to keep up. I just, I don't know, I felt like the author was name dropping at some point and I was like, but who the hell is that? Did we, were we introduced to that character before? Like, I don't know, I, I don't know. Honestly I was so confused, like half the time and I felt like this book was a little bit too long for what it's actually about like the first half is super slow like the first 300 pages are like so slow I felt like nothing was happening and then the last 200 pages is packed with action and that's when I couldn't put it down but honestly the first half of the book I was kind of bored and I as I said I was really confused because there were so many characters but I still really enjoyed the writer's writing. Um, I really liked the lush and vivid descriptions. I really felt like I was in Singapore. I've never been to any Asian country before, especially not Singapore. And honestly, I felt like I was there with the characters. I just really liked the writing, but the story wasn't really all that fun to read, in my opinion. Also, I felt like it was really overly dramatic. I felt like we were running in circles and I was like, seriously, can something happen now? Like, honestly, it's just people gossiping all the time. And I like when my books have a little bit more action. There were a few characters that I actually really liked reading about, like Astrid and Rachel and Nick. Those characters I really liked, but there were a bunch of characters. I also got a point of view in the book and I was just like, why do I care? Why should I care? Like, I don't care. <laughs> Honestly, like, I feel like so many people were given a point of view and not all of them deserved it. I'm still very excited for the movie and um, I think it will be, like, I think this would be a great movie. Honestly, I feel like this was more of a movie script than actually like an interesting book. Sorry. <laughs> but um, I'm very excited for the movie, but I'm not sure if I'll be continuing with the series because there are two other books um, after this one. But the cover is really pretty though, can we agree on that? <laughs> and the last book I read in June is actually a reread, and that is An Ember in the Ashes by Sabati here. An Ember in the Ashes follows the story of Laia, whose brother has been arrested for treason, and in exchange to get help from the resistance to help rescue her brother, she agrees to become a slave for the Martial Empire. More specifically, the commandant of the um, Blackleaf Academy where masks are trained. Um, there, Laia meets Elias, a trained soldier who's about to graduate from the Blackleaf Academy. He and Laia soon realize that their destinies are intertwined and what happens between them might change the empire forever. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars and honestly, you guys, I couldn't put it down. As I said before, I read this... Um, I think two years ago now. I read this in French as it was in my library, but I never continued with the series. I really enjoyed it the first time, but the, sec the sequel wasn't out yet at the time, and I don't know, I just never continued. It wasn't a priority on my TBR, but with Reaper at the Gates uh, being out uh, recently, this is the third book in the Emperor in the Ashes series, I decided to pick this up again and start the series over uh, so I could catch up with the hype. I so enjoyed it. I didn't remember how good this book was. Honestly, I didn't remember much from this book. It's not because it wasn't memorable or it, that it wasn't good. It's just that at some point I've read it all and I just don't remember every book that I've read. But this one was so good. I don't understand how I could not remember it. Like, I think the first time I read this I gave it 4 stars, but now I upped my rating to 5 stars. I couldn't put it down. I love the, both of the characters, um, Elias and Lila, the, the main characters. I love them so much. I uh, I don't know. I don't even know how to express my feelings about them. I just... I love them. I know some people say Laia is not strong or anything, that she's like kind of spineless, but honestly, you guys, it's the complete opposite. She's a slave. She gets like mistreated. She's still doing everything in her power to save her brother. Just because she doesn't have physical strength, it doesn't mean that she's not strong. And I also really loved Elias. Is my new fictional crush. Like, honestly... I don't know, I really liked it. I don't even have words to express it. I just, I really love this book. It was packed with action. Like, 
I think this book is like 400, 500 pages and I couldn't put it down. Like I read it in five days and that's while I was going to school. So you can tell that this was good. And I really recommend it and I'm so excited because I just ordered the sequel and it should be coming in actually today. So I'm so pumped to actually be reading the sequel to this. So that's it for my reading wrap up for the past two months. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give this a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and make sure to turn on the bell notifications so you can be notified whenever I post a new video. And I guess that's it and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!